in a world that rushes for technological leaps and bounds and sells you an overwhelming amount of options that can fit in your pocket, can a fixed focal length point and shoot camera be enough? Is this the answer for those who seek essence over excess? Can this camera stand its ground against the world? I think it definitely can, but not without some major compromises. This is the Ricoh GR3X, not your typical point-and-shoot camera but a compact powerhouse small enough to fit into your pocket, yet powerful enough to capture your version of the world in the DNG RAW format. Most of the focus or attention goes to the size of the camera. However, for me, that's simply not enough. The real highlight is the fact that Ricoh was able to fit a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor inside this tiny device, a true engineering marvel. Now that, in relation to its size, is significant. The image quality is hard to dispute. The colors can be pleasant and organic. And the fact that you can just shoot JPEGs with the included film simulations makes this camera feel right at home, especially as a Fujifilm shooter. The images are a bit too sharp for my taste, but light years better than other point-and-shoot cameras with smaller sensors. However, it is worth mentioning that the dynamic range on JPEGs feels somewhat limited, the low-light performance is not great, the sensor can feel noisy at times, and the white balance is a bit of a hit or miss for me. And don't get me wrong, these things are not necessarily negatives or cons. It's not an issue for people like me who like to get organic film-like photos in camera. That is the main reason why I still shoot with my X-Pro1 to this day, for getting the film-like experience on a digital camera. In fact, all of my upcoming Lightroom preset packs and all of the photos that I'm showing you today have grain included. And those four things I mentioned are even less of an issue if you shoot in RAW or DNG only. However, it is worth noting, I find that the dynamic range feels somewhat similar to the X-Pro1. However, the X-Pro1 and the GR3X are 10 years apart. Just food for thought. However, the fact that you can do highlight weighted metering really enhances the shooting experience. It definitely helps with shooting in harsh light conditions and helps protect your highlights. In fact, I'll go on record and say that this is by far my favorite feature of this camera. Some of the newer Leica cameras have the same feature, and I would really, really love to see this on my X-Pro cameras. It's great to see such a brilliant implementation of a software feature to directly complement or balance a hardware limitation. Bravo! Unlike the GR3, the GR3X has a 40mm equivalent focal length in full frame. Having a fixed focal length is liberating. It removes friction and the crippling effects of the paradox of choice. A necessary constraint that forces you to focus, be creative, and simply make do. Therefore, choosing the right focal length on a fixed lens camera can really make or break your entire shooting experience. 40mm happens to be the right choice for me. I do wish it had a wider aperture. It would make it a bit easier to isolate your subjects and create layers of separation being able to shoot at f2 would be ideal on this camera. I'm glad Ricoh listened to the feedback of their own audience and decided to make a 40mm version of the GR3. Otherwise, I would have never tested this camera. However, portability and image quality can mean nothing at all if you don't actually like using the camera. So, how does it feel to use the camera? Or perhaps a more meaningful question is, how does the camera make you, the artist, feel? 
The physical controls and setting dials are limited. They're minimal, stripped down for the sake of portability. I do like how the front dial and the shutter button feel. These do feel a lot better than you might think on first impressions. However, the back dial or the exposure compensation knob is atrocious. There is no other way to describe it. It is what it is. In theory, if you shoot in auto mode, then you can operate the camera with just one hand. In practice though, it might be harder than you think. I found the grip and overall size of the camera to be difficult to use with just one hand. If you have watched any of my previous videos, then you know that I really love using an actual viewfinder. It helps me focus on composition, the frame, and the moment. But with this camera, the LCD screen is the main way to interact with your menus and change other settings that are not your ISO, shutter speed, or aperture, which is fine if the screen is high quality enough and bright enough. But most of the time, I couldn't see anything. I live in the great white north. Snow is constant and blinding, and it's really hard to make out the details with this LCD screen. Even when you set it to the highest brightness and fully drained your already lackluster battery in the process. Now, I completely understand that me living in a cold country is not the camera's fault. However, these are the variables that I have to deal with, so now you know, just food for thought. But the good news is that even in minus 20 degrees Celsius, the camera can still operate well and offer great results. The power on speed is pretty fast, but the same cannot be said about the autofocus. I much prefer just setting up your snap focus desire range and using that instead of a general autofocus because it can be hit or miss. The snap focus and the built-in ND filter are really great features that help your shooting process. These are features that are really valuable and remove friction. Another great feature that I really like is the internal memory. I mentioned in my X-Pro2 review how having redundancy for your work is really crucial and a camera that has built-in memory is just great. Again, this is something that some of the newer Leica cameras include, but it's really great to see it at this price point. There's no weather ceiling, but that's to be expected from a point and shoot camera. I really don't baby my photography gear, but after four months of snow and cold weather, the camera is still fine. There are other things that I could mention, like the somewhat disappointing build quality, the tiny buttons, the fact that the camera scratches really easily, but I'll just move on. What you have to really ask yourself at this point is that some of those compromises, are they really worth the convenience of having something that can fit in your pocket? The common narrative seems to be that if a camera is really small and it fits in your pocket, ergo you will always carry it with you, ergo you will always take photos, ergo you will become the photographer that you always have wanted to become. I find that narrative or that way of seeing the world very problematic. I do agree that some equipment offers the convenience of doing certain things better, faster, or simply easier. Some equipment reduces friction or inspires you. I 100% agree. But if you tell me that owning a small pocket camera is the only way you can muster the willpower to actually carry it with you and take photos and get good, then I would suggest just question your motives and really do some self-exploration. The Ricoh GR3X is a testament to the philosophy of less is more. It's about capturing the everyday life, the mundane. I'm glad this camera exists. I'm glad it can help some people and reduce their friction of actually having a camera and going out there and practicing the craft, which is the thing that makes you happy and fulfills your soul. Overall, this is a great camera, a step in the right direction for point and shoot cameras and compact pocket cameras in general, even if it's not the right camera for me. The GR series will cement Ricoh's place as a pioneer in the compact camera market and will create new generations of photographers who seek convenience. A camera for those who seek essence over excess. Iterations drive the learning curve. To grow and learn, we must iterate. Test new gear 
try out new things, print your work, explore new sites, and improving on the techniques that you have already learned is the way to go. However, iterating can be costly. So, with the goal in mind to become a full-time creator, I have started a Patreon page. With your ongoing support through Patreon, you will help make this channel ad-free and sponsor-free. No more reviews of free products, just reviews. In return, you will have access to exclusive content, like behind the scenes and breakdown videos, current and future items from my digital store, starting right now with my brand new Fujifilm wallpaper packs, featuring the Fuji body cap and the Fujifilm X-Pro1. If these wallpaper packs are popular, then every single camera that I have reviewed and will review in the future will have one of those, and you can get them right here on Patreon, or you can buy them individually as well. You also get your name at the end of each video to say thank you for your support, and you do get my sincere gratitude. Thank you very much for your support, and as always, get out there, capture moments in time, and create memories. Thank you.